Hello again everyone and welcome back to the mouse hole with me on any mouse. Uh, this will just be a quick video to show you what happens at the end of a war. As I said to you in the last video, we were at war with House Saragon. And we can see here that we have this little bell icon. It's also showing up here. If I click on this, it'll take me to the same place. And clicking on the bell will show me that they are offering peace. And just so they don't attack my stations when I'm not here, I'm going to accept that for now. And you'll see that's immediately effective. We have no more diplomatic actions that need to be taken. And by now, if I go to my faction and my structures, we'll probably find, yeah, we've almost finished our new station. And perhaps we'll come back to that in a moment and I'll show you how we... Uh, how we then defend that. Um, as I showed you before, we have quite a lot going on now. We have quite a number of systems that we've taken over. This is now the second one I took over Hesiod a little earlier. I've just taken over 17 because we're already in a war. And um, we're making quite a lot of money. Um, I don't know quite what the time periods are that this relates to, but um, this is getting close to amounts of money that are getting difficult to spend. Uh, one thing I can show you while we're here though is that these two systems we've taken over, we can see that the security level is minus five in these two systems. Um, we don't really want to have really low security systems because that's where all sorts of piratey things are going to happen. So we're going to increase the security and the way we do that is by adding security units, adding guards and you'll see that by adding 10 guards it's given us a security level of 1. Uh, we added up to 20. It's now gone. It expects to give us a level of 4. We don't need it to be quite that high. I'm going to just take them off until we get to level 2. That's 18 guards. We'll say that we want security level 2. And that will now balance out at security level 2 with those 18 guards. They, of course, cost us money. So our daily expenses went up when we did that. You'll see that when I do that in the next system. And to compensate for that, I'm going to put the tax rate up. Um, I haven't really played with this all that much. I find that 5% seems to be pretty well tolerated. Uh, so we'll set that to 5% and that system will now, it will show here that uh, the security level has gone up and that the, uh, the tax rate is 5%, which means we are losing a bit of money in that system. But as things improve, that will increase. Uh, the, the amount of income will increase and we can do that potentially by doing other things too. Let's do the same thing for System 17. Um, I want it to be system uh, secured to level 2 as well. So let's just add some guards. That's going to take us all the way up to 20. So we'll now just pull that back until this must be a really... Wow. We don't need many guards here. Four guards at level 1. Five guards at level 4. Well, okay, we'll stick with that. And we'll set that to 5% tax rate as well. So it's the same as all of my other systems. And you see, we can also open and close the stargates here to either allow other people to enter the system or not, as we may choose. It automatically closes the gates to anyone you're at war with. Um, and here we can also see the level of the system. So most of these systems are really low level. Um, but we'll also see that the three systems that are gateway systems with the alphanumeric values rather than just numeric values, the ones marked in pink, these are the ones that are making all the money for me because we're getting all that tax from the gates. This is the tax rate they apply to people going through the gates. So that's where that income is coming from. And that's why those three systems are bringing in all the money. Let's go back to our structures again and see how that station is coming on. Nearly there. What else can we look at whilst we're here? Um, we can see the, the amount of traffic per day. So we do have some systems that are quite high tra or higher traffic than others. And you'll see that these are still losing money. Um, we don't have a lot of structures in these systems yet. And it's possible that by putting things like mining stations, we could increase that. Haven't experimented that yet. We'll do with that in due course. What we can look at though is the the people that we've got helping us with our tasks. So these are the um, groups of um, fighters I have working with me and they all have three stats in the same way that we do. They have soldier statistics, 
pilot statistics and research statistics. And if we go into Scudamore, for example, um, we can see that he's uh, he's doing well at pilot level 45. We maybe want to start thinking about increasing some of these soldier skills, though. So the way I do that is I will go to the overview. <clears throat> and I can tell Mr. Scudmore, rather than doing space um, trips, I can at assign him to ground forces. And what that will do, we'll also do it with Durward, who's also got low soldier levels, and so have these two. So we'll assign all of these, now that we're not at war, to ground forces. And they will now go off and they will do missions to improve their skills. And these skills will all increase up to around level 45 as well. Usually one or two levels above your own character level. So I'm level 43 pilot. They will go to level 45, um, which is really handy. But it's important to remember also that they need these skills. Because if we go into more difficult systems, if I were to send in some of these guys down here with very low pilot and very low... Um, soldier skills, they would just get killed right away. So we have to be aware of this when we're sending these people in to do raids or to defend systems uh, or to do anything else like um, looting, plundering some of the stations and things. Now you'll get introduced to this whole interface here as part of the story. I haven't used this as the, the new squad that came in in the 20.3 uh, update. This is the ground squad. These are my air squad and I haven't even touched it yet um, but you'll see that I have 487 people ready to join my army I don't think I can add any because I'm at the limit already yes I have max capacity but the way that I got those is again from doing these missions that come in the mailbox you'll see that in addition to getting an experience they also say that a number of their people are willing to help you in your upcoming battles and this is how you add soldiers into your members for the faction, which you then click to add them into here in your army, and you can then assign those into your various groups. Uh, I would show you how to do that, but mine are already full. Um, and I haven't really, since I learned that you need to train them, you need to actually get them some skills, they will go off and sort all that out themselves. Um, if we go once again into Scudamore here, he's now doing freelance missions with his team because I haven't given him any other instructions. And because I've now uh, sent him to be um, land forces, he will now, once he's finished his current mission, go off and do land missions. So I hope that helps you. We'll just go back and check. I want to see if our structure is yeah, just about ready. And once this has happened, I can show you how we add these defensive types of buildings into uh, that structure. So you'll see with all of my other structures, they're all fully defended already. And I'm trying to take things over at a slowish rate so that I can make sure they're all properly defended. We can only build one thing at a time. So once this one is finished, I can start building one in the other system I just took over. And when this is finished, which it will be in just a moment, We'll start this probably by adding in shield quarters, turret quarters and drones as well as a dock for ships to get in. Now we're not going to have enough resources there to do that, so we'll need to trade for them. As soon as this tells us that we can do that, we will. just come out of that menu to give it a chance to uh, update. Yep, still not quite completed. Uh, we could of course uh, go with operations against some of the other systems and we can tell from looking at this menu roughly um, how hard they're going to be fed against. We can see some of them are below my level some of them are above, are about the same as me, and some are way higher than me. But they're the ones that are making all the money. Uh, level 77, they're making 19 million. I think that's per hour, but I'm not entirely convinced. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon, that's their treasury, is uh, 19 million. Um, they all seem to have nine fleets um, to start with. But 
these levels are important when we consider the soldiers that we're going to, to, to send against them. Uh, we've got some here like this one. It's got a huge number of structures for us to take over. But we also, as we move on, we will find that some of these people are um, actually linked together and um, they will defend each other. So we need to just be mindful of that as we're going to attack them. Our structure is still not finished. Perhaps we should come back and do that in a separate video. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you. And um, in the next video, we'll look at how we're going to actually upgrade this structure once it's finally finished being uh, constructed. Thanks for watching. Um, let me know what else you'd like to find out about Spaceborne in the comments. Take care.